Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Secret Invasion is the Marvel crossover event, making my many MCU scroll searches after Captain Marvel and Spider-Man Far From Home not a total waste of time. Kevin Feige's announcement last month confirmed it, folks. Some person or persons that we have known in the MCU, beyond Nick Fury and Maria Hill, is a scroll imposter. Marvel's One Division is launching this multiverse saga this week, and I actually think more Secret Invasion seeds are being planted in the series that we need to keep an eye out for. Those of you tired of me saying everything in WandaVision is Mephisto, you can relax. Now everything is scrolls, because I'm dragging WandaVision through my other indulgent tinfoil party, a scroll search. And this video was brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. After reports of a Nick Fury Disney Plus series in the works earlier last year, Feige confirmed my theory that this was actually a Secret Invasion series. Secret Invasion. Next to Civil War, Secret Invasion is arguably the biggest crossover comic event in the last 20 years. It's about a sect of Skrulls who have infiltrated every level of life on Earth. Mm, every level of life on Earth, Feige. <laughs> Very choice words. Hinting that that infiltration includes organizations like S.H.I.E.L.D. and the Avengers. Now, of course, the Skrulls have infiltrated S.H.I.E.L.D. We saw that in Captain Marvel. Skrulls impersonated Agent Coulson and Talos posed as Fury's boss, Keller. And we know Fury's Skrull partnership continued in secret through the years because Spider-Man Far From Home ended by revealing that version of Fury was Talos the whole time. <gasps> He told Peter Parker that Mysterio was from Earth, just not yours. Mr. Beck is from Earth, just not yours. As in, he's not from Earth. He and Maria Hill briefly discussed Cree sleeper cells. I thought Cree having sleeper cells was top secret information. Nick. Referring to some ongoing covert war between the Kree and the Skrulls. And then, of course, the post credit scene shows Fury and Hill freaking reverting back to the Skrulls, Talos, and his wife, Sorin, while the real Fury was kicking back on a space station with a bunch of Skrulls who took his shoes. Who's got my shoes? Now, I immediately identified this as the Peak, the orbital space station headquarters of SWORD, Sentient World Observation and Response Department. SWORD doesn't have a ton of operations with the Skrulls in the comics, and it's actually run by Abigail Brand, not Nick Fury. But in the MCU, it seems SWORD is a kind of offshoot of S.H.I.E.L.D. after S.H.I.E.L.D. fell following its corruption by Hydra, some secret contingency that Nick Fury fled to after burning his bridge with S.H.I.E.L.D. and Winter Soldier. We can assume that SWORD was a side project that Nick Fury had for a while because that pager that he exchanged with Captain Marvel, the one that he used to summon her at the end of Infinity War, was later revealed to have a sword crest on the back of it. And now, a sword looks to be playing a very big role in WandaVision, premiering this Friday. Sword is the organization monitoring Wanda in her Westview pocket reality. It includes former FBI agent Jimmy Wu from Ant-Man and the Wasp, astrophysicist Darcy Lewis from the Thor movies, and Monica Rambeau, grown up from the young girl she was in the Captain Marvel film. Early footage shows the sword crest popping up all over WandaVision. On the back of the suit of the beekeeper who climbs up through the manhole, on the toy helicopter Wanda finds, which we think might be that life-size helicopter warped into a harmless toy. And many of you rightly pointed out that Monica's necklace is obviously another sword logo. Don't know how I missed that one. The fact that Monica is involved with the same scroll aligned organization that Nick Fury appears to be connected to forces us to go back and look at Monica's first close encounter with these extraterrestrials, playing Uno at her Louisiana Rambo home with Talos' daughter. Look at that card. You guys have the best eyes. Don't ever change your eyes. Oh, a clue! We didn't get a very clear look at the eyes of this young scroll girl earlier on the scroll ship. Wide with fear in an interesting close-up reaction shot after her father, disguised as a Kree soldier, shot the other Kree. Cover her eyes. Onto the ship. Let's go. Let's go. Now I always thought something more was gonna come from that, but now it seems like a loose end setting up a future of this friendship, which we could see with the adult sword agent Monica Rambeau in WandaVision. Especially since, as I saw in my trailer breakdown last year, the scene in which Monica gets ejected from Westview shows a second Monica approaching with the other agents. I know you're gonna say this is just edited from two different scenes, but in the close-up of Monica laying in the grass, you can see the headlights of the trucks that the other 
other Monica rolls up in behind her. Two Monicas! So is this all setting up the events of Secret Invasion? And again, thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Are you looking to sell your wares? Do you want the world to be able to appreciate your replica Wolverine claws and appreciate how they're sharp enough to really hurt yourself? Present your claws and any of your other work to the world using Squarespace's professional portfolio designs, display projects, and customizable galleries, and add password-protected pages to share private work with clients. You can auto-post your content to Twitter, Facebook, or Tumblr. They have built-in mobile websites and a really slick mailing list feature to stay in touch with your customers. Squarespace will even sell you a URL. Can uh, somebody check to see if oopsmyclaws.com is available? If it is, Squarespace will sell it. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash new rock stars to save 10% off your first purchase of website or a domain. That's squarespace.com slash new rock stars for 10% off your first purchase of website or a domain. So on this channel, we have done a number of scroll searches, including a super deep dive into pretty much every name in the MCU in an episode of The Big Question. Our investigation concluded that beyond Nick Fury and Maria Hill, whom we already know about, the likeliest MCU characters to either be scroll imposters themselves or to have scroll doubles whom they work in tandem with are the be cast government workers without clearly defined on-screen origin stories, but faces who have seemingly always been there on the periphery for whom it'd be pretty dramatic to see revealed as scrolls. Sharon Carter, Secretary of State Thaddeus Ross, Hank Pym, even Howard Stark. I know when Howard Stark died, we didn't see him revert to a scroll, but I would say the camera did quickly cut away from his final breaths, and I could see the MCU suddenly no longer really holding itself to that reversion rule like they've retconned over crazier plot holes before. That's why New Rockstars is here to make videos explaining how it all kind of actually makes sense. Meanwhile, the marquee Avengers names like Cap, Hulk, Spider-Man, they're less likely to be scrolls because as superheroes, their scroll imposters to mirror their powers would have to be what's called super scrolls, which are a thing, but on screen, I would see that kind of taking away some of the uniqueness of those heroes in the MCU. But a lot of the Avengers are relatively normal human beings, just with super advanced tech. Folks like Sam Wilson, Falcon, Natasha Romanoff, maybe Jim Rhodes' War Machine, a guy who has literally changed faces. Look, it's me. I'm here. Deal with it. Let's move on. But given Rhodey's injury in Civil War, I doubt he would have stayed in his broken human form for that whole process. Boom. You looking for this? Folks, when we're identifying scroll suspects, a lot of these people could be scrolls, but it's more helpful to look at who would be scrolls for working with scrolls. Like, along with Fury, who else has relationships with the scroll for which it would be valuable to partner with them? I think this little overlooked moment in Captain Marvel was the setup for a similar scroll partnership between Monica Rambeau and Talos' daughter, Partners in Deceit. One theory I presented after Far From Home is that Maria Hill's relative recent rise through the S.H.I.E.L.D. ranks, Nebula's backstory, and the fact that unlike Fury, we never saw where the real Hill was after Soren was revealed in Far From Home. All of this poses the possibility that there might never have really been a human Maria Hill, but rather Maria Hill was the human form of Soren, and that Talos all this time served as Fury's double so that Nick Fury could kind of be in multiple places at once. You need to keep both eyes open. I think we can extend that theory to Talos' daughter. As a friend of Monica Rambeau, as these two girls both rise up through the ranks of S.W.O.R.D. Imagine a scenario in WandaVision where Monica defies Jimmy Woo's orders to stay away from the border of this town of Westview for their own safety. But Monica sneaks into the town with her scroll friend posing as her on the outside so that no one would know Monica had gone. But then, when Monica is suddenly ejected from Wanda's dream, Monica too is right there, and uh, wow, game over, man. We're some real pretty shit now, man. So the only thing we need to make this make sense is which familiar face has that female scroll been all the other time? Well, a solid suspect? Sharon Carter. Sharon Carter is returning shortly after WandaVision in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And there is a lot we don't know about her. She is sneaky, always spying on Cap. And even Cap didn't know that she was related to Peggy Carter. In fact, maybe that whole great granny's identity was really just a cover story to help this scroll blend into society. These secret invasion in the comics pose these scrolls as the antagonists. They're enemy aliens invading the ranks of human society in order to 
bring down Earth. But the MCU secret invasion is going to be a lot more complex. Skrulls are the good guys in the MCU. They work with Fury to try to help protect Earth from the imperialist Kree, those Kree sleeper cells. That's what that's all about. But in order to help protect Earth, they have to hide and blend in in the ranks. But knowing how humans think, that reveal ain't gonna go over well. Humanity loves to demonize those not in our tribes. So that's what the secret invasion is gonna be. Humans versus scrolls. even though scrolls are just trying to help us to protect us from the real enemy, the Kree. That is how we get an MCU secret invasion crisis. Hopefully sometime next year on Disney+, Plus. And it's all going to start with Monica Rambeau in WandaVision in the weeks ahead. Mark my words. Actually, don't mark them. I can't handle another what we got wrong. Hey, support this channel by checking out our great merch options, including our new latest obsession custom WandaVision shirts with hidden visuals revealed via augmented reality at NewRockStarsMerch.com. Getting one of these babies gives you the option to write custom shout outs that we will feature in our Inside Marvel WandaVision after show that is coming this Friday right after the premiere on Disney+. Plus. And of course, my Easter egg breakdown will come out the next day. Follow me at EA Voss. Follow New Rockstars. Subscribe to New Rockstars here on YouTube. Subscribe to Inside Marvel wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you for watching. And remember, if you are a scroll, you legally have to tell me.